Hi folks, I'm Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And a question I often, often get by folks that I bump into, people in our practice, oh, I'm fatigued. Please help me with my fatigue. I'm always fatigued. Today's video is about what controls fatigue and how to correct it slowly over time. And there will be a huge controversial pearl at the end. I know that's clickbait, but there really will be. So let's break this down biologically. The single most important thing for the human body, by far, and it's, enti it's entirely good to do this, is to provide, produce and provide cellular energy. The mitochondria take substrates, protein, carbohydrates, fat, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They go into the mitochondria. There's an exchange pathway that happens where you transfer energy from those bonds into adenosine phosphate molecules and you build up ATP. Energy transfer, that energy then can, can then be used by the cell for its various functions. So at a foundational level, cellular energy controls everything. And without adequate cellular, adequate cellular energy, no matter what else is in the body, without adequate mitochondrial energy, and if the ratio of AMP energy depleted adenosine phosphate versus ATP energy rich phosphate, the ratio of AMP, if the AMP is higher than the ADP and the mitochondria are dysfunctional, you don't have enough substrate coming in or you don't have that energy transfer, you will be fatigued in every organ, most notably your brain and your muscles. So fatigue is driven exclusively by energy provision through the mitochondria. And the human body will shut, its down, shut, it, shut itself down from every unnecessary symptom, sorry, every unnecessary system in order to provide energy to the vital systems, the breathing, the heart, even if the brain is unconscious. Without those two organs, you are dead. So now let's work it backwards from there. The key thing about energy to the mitochondria, the primary two sources of energy for the mitochondria, carbohydrates, glucose, sugar, and ketones or fat. Fatty acids, ketones, those are the two primary sources of energy. For most cells, carbohydrates entering into the cell require insulin. And while to enter the cell, fat and ketones does not require insulin, insulin does regulate, together with glucagon, ketone production as well as fat release from the fat cell. So the ketones and the fat are indirectly controlled by insulin. Cellular energy provision for most cells is directly controlled by insulin. So we've got carbs and ketones. Take that back a step, insulin, directly and indirectly. And then we've got a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon is your energy provision hormone. So glucagon releases sugar from the liver, releases ketones, makes ketones, and releases fat from the fat cells. And glucagon, glucagon and insulin are in relationship. So fatigue most commonly is caused by metabolic dysfunction at a cellular level. When cellular energy provision isn't happening, what controls that? Glucagon-insulin ratio and the sensitivity of cells to those hormones. Now, let's walk this a step backwards, okay? So GLP-1, a hormone in the gut, everybody's heard of GLP-1, controls both insulin and glucagon. And if you have a GLP-1 resistance or flat GLP-1, you are not adequately controlling insulin and glucagon, therefore you are creating fatigue. And metabolic dysfunction is going to cause dysfunction at a GI level based on what you're eating and drinking. So if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, not a lot of fat, not a lot of protein, you are automatically going to have cellular fatigue. Even though you've got a ton of energy going in, more energy than you need, it cannot get into the cells to be used appropriately. It's being stored and distributed to your cells, but not entering them at a level they need. That is the commonest, metabolic dysfunction is the commonest cause of fatigue. Now, what else regulates that? So we've said GLP-1, insulin, glucagon. Well, insulin has a number of subsidiary hormones that regulate human biology. Insulin regulates 
thyroid hormone, T3 activation, that creates or that controls metabolic rate. The rate at which your cells function, the rate at which your heart functions. T3 controls metabolic rate and metabolic spend, regulated by insulin. Insulin regulates human growth hormone. Human growth hormone, a huge anabolic repair hormone. And insulin regulates in males and females the production of testosterone, your fourth anabolic hormone. So if there's dysfunction of testosterone, if there's dysfunction of human growth hormone in the pituitary, if there's dysfunction of thyroid hormone anywhere along the pathway from Hashimoto's, antibodies to thyroid, overstimulation, Graves' disease, a lack of iodine, any dysfunction of any of those hormones is going to lead to fatigue. And that is the commonest cause of fatigue. And every one of those can be measured and corrected metabolically through diet and possibly medications. And human growth hormone and all the other pituitary hormones act collectively under the control and regulation of insulin. I've just started, I like to vary up my exercise, but Ketone IQ that sponsored a paper, uh, a study done in Belgium at the Leuven uh, University in Belgium, uh, they looked at um, boosting sprint power and boosting recovery. So I put this to the test. Now, uh, you'll hear me talk about my sprints on the track. But I did a few additional things. Number one, my friend Sean Baker holds the world's uh, um, long distance rowing, land rowing. So I did some land rowing. I did some swimming. Now, I'm not a big swimmer, but I did some swim times. Then I did some biking. And um, I just used my regular bike, not a speed bike. But I did those three things in sprint intervals. And the way it works is you choose, let's say, uh, 50 meters or 100 meters of swimming and you swim as fast as you can or you cycle three kilometers or five kilometers as fast as you can basically a sprint race or you row for 10 minutes and you see how many cycles you can do in five or 10 minutes and I took on some days regular ketone IQ I then took the ketone IQ with caffeine and I'd already proven this on my land sprints around a track, but every one of those modalities in the water, on a bike or on a rowing machine, every one showed a statistically faster speed over a block of time and faster heart rate recovery, because I do these repetitively, faster heart rate recovery just based on ketones and providing those ketones to my muscles. Try it, folks. Now, the next one is one that overrides the entire system. The next one is a hormone that keeps you alive environmentally. And the next hormone is adrenaline. And adrenaline overrides all the other hormones. Adrenaline uh, stimulates a massive release of energy. And it's an appropriate fright or flight energy that gets, is needed from time to time. But if you're in an adrenergic state, if you're fully stressed out all the time and your adrenaline is firing all the time, then the cells just chill out and they're not getting the energy they need. And there's resistance to adrenaline. And how do we measure that? Because it's difficult to measure adrenaline. So people measure cortisol. Cortisol is the guy that puts adrenaline out. So you should have this relationship between get a big fright, get stressed out, you release adrenaline, fright's over, cortisol dampens that. But if your adrenaline is on all the time, then your cortisol is on, on all the time. And when people talk about cortisol, cortisol, high levels of cortisol, you get cortisol resistance. So now adrenaline's high all the time because you're stressed out, cortisol is up all the time. That, I was going to use a four-letter expletive, but you know what it does to the entire system. It screws it up. Okay, um, I'm not going to use that word, um, but the entire system is overridden by adrenaline and cortisol. And while at first you're all hyped up and stressed out, you burn out, you're flat. You're flat as a cold fire the morning afterwards. You know, you have a beautiful fire going on in the evening. You wake up the next morning, there's a bunch of ash and 
uh, coal and the fire is dead, that's what most metabolically challenged people's bodies look like because the adrenaline, the cortisol results in burnout. And you can't bring those ashes to life again. They're just flat. Okay, so adrenaline cortisol system and an absence of effective stress relief. What's that about? Emotion management, having off ramps, having fortresses of solitude, doing things that release the endorphin tension, de-stressing. But we have that fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer places. And when we watch screens and we get aggravated by other people's lives, that adrenaline cortisol function is going on all the time, going ballistic. So... If you're going to deal with your fatigue, you want to restore metabolic health at a cellular energy provision level. You want to store normal hormonal cycling by introducing fasting, fat, and controlling glucose. You want to get become insulin sensitive. You want to cycle adrenergic states, which requires effort-based stress management and mental health breaks and vacations and time off. Because ultimately, both the stress levels, perpetual stress, and the metabolic cycling restore mi mitochondrial health. And restoring mitochondrial health, mitochondrial generation, mitochondrial structural normality is crucial. And we require substrate cycling. You may need some hormones, you may need some vitamins to do that. You may need some supplements to help you early on, but ultimately you should rely on two things, a healthy diet and healthy stress management cycling. And then the final contributor is exercise, physical activity, and the time we're least likely to do physical activity is when we most need it, when we're exhausted and we're tired and we're flat and we're fatigued. And we don't do the physical activity, and then the body just cycles back into a futile cycle because you're not directing your energy anywhere. So physical activity, particularly when you are least likely to do it, is when you most need it. Not over drinking water, not putting toxins in your body like nicotine and alcohol. Of course, those are the obvious ones. The toxins that we expose ourselves to, to give us energy. To, to combat fatigue. Oh, I need a cigarette. I need caffeine. Caffeine's a different story. <laughs> I'll argue about that at another time. But all of those are toxic drugs that, again, make the, they may give you an instant gratification, but they destroy the long-term restoration. And now you wonder, why the hell am I fatigued? The final two. We're not at the pool yet. But one of the most crucial ones that engages uh, when you're metabolically healthy and when you've got good stress management is a healthy sleep cycle. Sleep is crucially important. And it's not just the length of sleep. Length of sleep, duration of sleep is less important than the quality. And you can only get into good quality sleep if you're emotionally relaxed and if you're metabolically healthy. So those three things are interdependent. The adrenal cortisol axis, the metabolic um, substrate health axis, micro and macronutrients, and healthy sleep. Those three cycles are crucial. They're critical. And here's the pearl, folks. Here's the one that everybody's uncomfortable speaking about. But here's the pearl. It's the last thing. The final pearl that combats fatigue, that is a marker of a non-fatigued, healthy human being, but is also one of the best ways to deal with fatigue. Well, you tell me, what are you thinking of? Because here's what it is. Healthy sex. Healthy sex. A healthy sex life. By yourself, with a partner, Ideally, with a partner where you have human connection, you have incredible endorphin experience with a human connection, and healthy sex. And if you are able to have healthy sex, not an unhealthy way we're using pornography and prostitution and all that kind of thing, with a partner or by yourself where you have healthy sex as a relaxant, as a way to get to sleep, as an endorphin high, as a stress management tool for human connection, and if you're able to have healthy sex, 
your libido may be down, men might have erectile dysfunction, females may have lubrication issues, very often connected in parallel with exactly the same causes of global fatigue. So if you have the ability and actually engage in healthy sex on a regular basis, you are not going to be fatigued. You're not going to be fatigued. And the flip side is, engaging in healthy sex is one of the best ways to break this fatigue cycle and have less fatigue the next day. Now, if the, if the healthy sex results in children, then you're going to be fatigued for the next 20 years. <laughs> so be very cautious, wear a hat. But, but children are your greatest source of strength and love and also fatigue. Now, I'm just being, I've got a four-year-old, okay? Um, but those are, let me recap, the primary sources of fatigue, number one, metabolic disruption all the way along the pathway from substrates to the way your cell, cells handle and obtain energy and how they, how they manage energy, okay? It's not just energy inside the body, it's the ability to spend and use energy combats fatigue. And there's a whole hormonal and substrate and an eating pattern and a daily cyclical pattern that includes fasting as well as eating. The second part that regulates and overrides that is stress management. Adrenaline and cortisol, stress management, and having off-ramps of de-stressing on a regular basis. And then the final part of that is healthy sleep and healthy sexuality that coordinates all of those. So if you come into your own fatigued, don't just think, okay, I'm fatigued. That's the symptom. Let's walk this back and examine every level of those and make corrections along the way. It may take some time, but I can guarantee you it's one of those things. Stress management, sleep management, sexuality, and primarily energy delivery at a mitochondrial level. And it may be dysfunctional entry into the cell, dysfunctional energy handling, or dysfunctional mitochondria. And that includes micronutrients that are required along the process. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If I've made you think differently about one of the commonest symptoms people come into our practice with, fatigue, and we can sort through it in a scientific way, we can help you over time.